Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Fantasy FC has arrived in all of its glory, or lack thereof, actually, and it's exposed a massive problem that keeps happening on FC24. I want to talk about that and uncover that today. I think it's going along the lines of one of the things that is frustrating us most about promos in this game right now. But I do want to look at the good from yesterday in Fantasy FC Team 1 and the bad with all the content that we got and look forward into today on Saturday. The market's been moving in some quiet ways, but also in some major ways. I want to look into that, how we might be able to make some coins and what to watch out for with these cards that are pretty expensive. Let's talk about it. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Let's run over yesterday's Friday content, starting with, let's start with the good stuff. Let's go to objectives, the stuff that I think most of us are fine with or happy with. First of all, I've already completed the objective for Fantasy FC Nerea Izagire from Rail Sociedad in the Liga F. I mean, guys, literally just play champs. You will get this card done. It is a free live card that is 87 rated. Not that insane of a card, but statistically solid all around. Four star, four star with incisive pass plus. And yeah, really easy to get done. Like I played foot champs for, I don't know, five, six games. And I got that card done. Very, very easy to do. Really, I have no complaints about that because it's a card that would potentially upgrade as well as it is live. Now, the big W in the objective section is the cup. Guys, this cup is one of the best, if not the best cup we have had during the entire year because it is refreshing. It is something different and the rewards are better than honestly, all, almost all the other cups that we have had as well. You get Fernando Torres inside of this. You get an 85 double towards the end, 84 five, 85 three, an ultimate pack, an 84 times 20 is the win 20 reward, and an 85 times 10 is the entire group reward. It is a two week cup. It is out over the entirety of this Fantasy FC promo. And so the rewards are good, right? I would say it's arguably better to do this than to play Rivals. If you had to choose one, I know Rivals gives you more XP, right? And we need XP. We're down bad in terms of that. This gives you a thousand XP, but Rivals will give you a little bit more. So maybe you try to split your time between the two. But I will say this is really, really good in terms of the packs you get from rewards. It is better than Rivals in my opinion. Now, the thing that's making it a lot of fun is it's no limited five games a day, nothing like that. It is unlimited games for the next 13 days. You can play this cup and the team requirements are different as well. It is refreshing because this is something that people have been asking for for like almost the entire year. A different, it almost feels like a tournament mode, right? It's a cup mode. It is a friendly mode where you have to use players that are not the most meta ones in your team. Max 86 squad. So you can use basically a full squad of 87s. And I'm throwing in a couple of other random players just to put them in my team that I had in my club. 88 and overall players, maximum zero. So you have to use players 87 and below to get yourself an 86 rated squad which is really refreshing. Like, look at this team. I'm using cards that I used in the beginning of the year. It's kind of like a throwback, right? For using the flashback De Bruyne. I'm using Evo cards that I used a long time ago that now I'm going to use and actually hopefully do pretty well with in this cup mode. Maybe some of the fodder future stars that you've most recently packed. Evolutions cards you haven't been able to upgrade. Other SBCs that are maybe still sitting in a club like this Balotelli or like I just packed Politano yesterday from a safe player pick. This is cool because it's different, man. And it's not everybody running around with their insane meta teams. It's forcing you to try something different, to use lower rated cards. And you can use loans. You can use loans, which I think is actually nice that EA allowed that because some people maybe have turned a lot of these cards into SBCs and just rinsed them and cleaned out their club. You can use loan cards. Uh, but again, the loan cards have to be in that lower rating. So it is nice. A lot of people are saying, play golden goal for this, play golden goal. But honestly... I don't think you, I mean, it's tough, right? Some people are going to play golden goal and others are not. I think you have to go in and you can't expect to get a golden goal game just because you need to score in 40 matches um, and you have to score 40 goals. Sorry, not in 40 matches, score 40 goals. Yes, we do not want to play 40 matches of the cup. We will play 20 and we will probably play a little bit more than that to get 20 wins. But I think Golden Goal will be useful maybe towards the end when you're just trying to get your wins. But I think for a lot of people right now at the beginning, uh, you're going to find some people that have Golden Goal and some people that don't. It's just, it's hard to just say, yes, you should play Golden Goal in this game mode when there's a scoring requirement that is there as a part of it. So I don't know, just be flexible. Come, if you come up against somebody with GG or Golden Goal in their team name, they're probably trying to play that. Or if you get a message from somebody, 
just watch out for that. So I know there's a lot of opinions around that and all that sort of thing. So play that how you want to. That's what I'll tell you. Now, with this being a thing, this cup, it's moving the market, guys, because people are going out and buying cards that maybe they already turned into SBCs or they're going and building teams for this cup because they don't have players that they want to use or meta enough players, right? Everybody's got to have the best cards possible to try to go and win this cup. Take a look at Alan St. Maxim, an 86 rated meta card. 46,000 coins all the way to 70k. Nick Pope went from under 20k. He was okay, sorry, not 20k, under 30k, 29,000 coins. He is now 42,000 coins. I could show you guys tons of examples of lower tier cards, 87 rated and below, that are flying on the market right now. So if you can't build a team from your club and you're going out on the market, or if you just want a cool place to trade and you want to kind of like throw yourself back to October, November, maybe even a little bit of December on this game, go trade with some of those cards that are in that rating that 87 rating and below that are pretty meta and popular. You guys remember some of the big names. Go and trade with those cards because there is demand. And I will say some of them like that Allen St. Maximum that are up a ton, you probably don't want to hold on to them for too long. I think that the peak of their prices will probably be sometime this weekend or early to start next week just because that's when most people will be grinding the cup to get all those games done and buying those players. So that is like one of the biggest, best things from yesterday's content. That's why I wanted to talk about it for a while um because it's a w and that is i think that's the biggest w out of yesterday's content now closely behind that as the second biggest w in my opinion is the exchange section it's back in sbcs this was a very welcome surprise yesterday to see the exchange sbcs from team of the year welcomed back and they are out for 55 days so in theory these should be here through team of the season, or at least through most of team of the season, which is absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible for crafting, for duplicates that you maybe have in this game. There were people even packing the brand new promo cards from these dupe exchanges yesterday. So absolutely love this from EA. They're just nice to have. I'm not going and buying these fodder cards to put them in here, but it is very, very nice to have this. Now, also with them dropping that, I think they're going to keep an upgrade pack SBC available almost at all times with that out. And what they have released so far is the 81 plus double. Of course, we still have the 81 plus player pick, which I think is better. But the 81 plus double upgrade is a place where you can rinse your golds, commons, and rares into five rares, 11 golds. You get two 81 plus cards. It's a pack, not a pick. It's not as good as the 81 plus, but it's not terrible, right? It's an upgrade SBC that we can craft into once the 81 plus player pick does end up going away. So that was our that was our WSBC content yesterday. We also have a daily FC fantasy challenge, so that is there. And then we did we had one player SBC. All right, we got to talk about Timo Werner the burner because this one is coming in at a little bit of a controversial price point and also some thumbs up and thumbs down. A little bit of disagreement on this card. Now, I've started him because I'm a Spurs fan. Going to get this one done for sure. Two playstyle pluses on this Timo Werner with 95 pace, 88 shooting, 88 dribbling, four star, five star. Timo Werner the burner. He's always overpowered. I can remember back to like FIFA 18, team of the season. His card was nutty. Maybe it was FIFA 20. Anyway, he had some crazy, crazy cards in the past couple of years. He's always overpowered. Now, a lot of people look at this card and say, those stats are pretty crazy. And then it's all about the upgrades, right? Since these players are live the day they get dropped in the game, Werner has the next four league matches to get two wins, appear three times, a score or assist in one goal or assist, and then the club scoring 11 goals in the next four to hopefully get himself to a 93 rated card. No play style additions, no skill move additions. It's just all stats for these upgrades. Once again, it is exactly as it was leaked. A lot of people are saying chip shot plus is a bit of an L. I agree with that. Um, I would have rather had something else. He doesn't have any passing play styles, which I mean is probably fine. Power shot plus is really good. I'm sure he's going to be insane. You know what it might kind of remind some of you guys of is the Raheem the Dream Sterling card, the SBC, where he had the fire or the ice. A lot of people did. Was it the fire one? The fire one, I think, had the power shot plus, and it was the, the shooting one, like the striker position one. One of those did at least. And it's kind of probably going to play a little bit like that car, right? He's a little bit shorter. He's really good dribbling wise. He's got rapid, quick step, relentless, first touch, technical. He's going to be pretty, pretty good. So I know the SBC is a little expensive, right? So when you look at the SBC, it's only 34% upvoted because it's 500,000 coins. But the card itself is 1,200 thumbs up on Footbin. I think people like the card or think the card is decent. I just think the price is a little bit steep. But also, 
I think EA is smart here. They're getting more people to do this because there's not as many SBCs out right now that people want to craft. And this is a live and upgrading card that everybody knows. Timo Werner is OP. Some guys have been using an FC Founders version of Timo Werner since the beginning of the year. So I think that price could have been cheaper, but again, it's a live card. They're going to overprice those SBCs for live cards just a little bit to get you to pay extra for the what if part of that card for sure. So to kind of decide for yourself on that one, I'm doing it for the Spurs links, of course. And I hope that he ends up getting upgrades and that the card turns out insane. Fingers crossed 100% for that. Now, let's go to the last place of content that we haven't looked yet. That is Evolutions. Guys, we had a really good Evo that was dropped yesterday as well. I mean, it goes, I think the objective content with the cup was probably the best thing. The exchanges are the second best. And this is probably the third best thing. The pick it up Evolution is exactly what you think it would be. A pace boost. Pick up the pace on a card that's been in your club for a long time. Or maybe just a gold card that you want to evolve. And I love that James Madison Player of the Month fits into this because, yeah, he gets a little bit of a boost as well. But I like that this is just like repurposing a card that was good at the early stage of the game that is now out of the meta, out of the power curve. And you're putting them right back into it with a big pace upgrade. Passing boost here. Well, like, look at this James Madison. This looks pretty sick. I know it doesn't give him any play styles or anything like that. It just literally gives him more stats and uh, more pace specifically. But this Evo is one that a lot of people are very excited about. If you look at Footman, 79% upvoted. You, you don't have to have, um, I think the only requirement is, yeah, the only requirements are stats. So you can have multiple playstyle pluses. This is actually a crazy Evo because you can use this potentially in the future for so many different combinations. It's only out for nine days. So I would say watch out for that. Um, but yeah, people are using this Evo right now to put uh, pace on guys like Bernardo Silva or um, also like Guijaro. I think her gold card is extinct right now on the market because everybody's putting Guijaro into this Evo. And like, look at that card. That's a pretty crazy looking Guijaro right there. I think she's one of the most popular cards that is being put in this evolution right now. And of course, you can start to see some of these crazy double Evo combinations or multiple Evo combinations where cards that went into double pursuit plus that have two play styles also can fit into this and get upgraded even further. That's why I'm saying this could be a really, really incredible double Evo potential, even though it's not out for very long. I think we have more Evos coming that you could double up with this just because it is a pace boost. There's no positioning aspect of it at all, at all. So it's really cool. That's a nice Evo EA. There's a lot of customizability with that. I'm a big fan. That was another big W of content yesterday so let's talk about the team of players that is impacts now okay let's go there because that is probably one of the biggest things that is honestly causing controversy on this game right now let's look at the team first before we talk about you know what's going on with prices and all that and the problem right that i brought up in the intro that was really exposed yesterday um guys they didn't juice this promo like as, as much as i thought they would there are some crazy boosted cards in here this Griezmann is disgusting okay five star skill and a four star weak foot upgrade for Griezmann this is a crazy crazy meta card with technical plus and the finesse plus yes it's live yes it's upgrading I do believe he has an ankle injury so that might hurt his chances for upgrades which also is a little bit like why is he 6.7 million after being extinct that's crazy but they gave him a huge boost they did some nice boost these cards but they also didn't go all the way with it, right? Marquinhos. I think Marquinhos is one of the most impressive boosted cards from this promo. Plus six pace and six physical. That card is disgusting. He is one of the best center backs in the game, right? With that card boost that he had yesterday. I think that on the lower tier, Majuri got a good boost. Chalhanoglu has a usable card for like the first time almost ever. Grealish's card is okay. It's like the super top tier. It's really honestly very similar to the future stars the super top tier cards got boosted insane and they're like pushing the power curve up on those couple cards but then it's like the rest of the promo team is still just kind of okay they're not terrible they're good but they're just okay right same thing with some of the heroes company's card looks unbelievable plus four pace five passing three physical and he's got the two best in my opinion playstyle pluses in the game for a center back that is a disgusting card right but he's also 7 million coins. Marquisio looks cracked, and that's one of the best midfielders in the game. He's got block plus and anticipate plus. Really, playstyle pluses you'd want to see on a center back, but still pretty good. Tevez is looking crazy. Five-star, four-star. 
Futre, I mean, he still has a three-star weak foot. They didn't upgrade him as much. Kessler looks pretty nuts. We looked at her card yesterday. It was exactly the same as the leagues. So it's kind of like they started to do something crazy with this promo team with Mendy, Griezmann, Marquisio, you know, company. They started to do something crazy and upgrade the cards like they were going to push the power curve like we talked about. But then, of course, this is where the problem is. They make them really freaking expensive, okay? And this is the problem, right? This is the problem. Yesterday, when the content dropped... I'm pretty sure there was like eight or nine cards that were literally extinct on the market. And guys, this has been a trend that has become increasingly annoying to me and to I'm sure a lot of you. Not that all of us have six to seven mil to go out and buy and try out these cards anyway, but the fact that they're extinct on the market and making people buy these cards in this market that is already inflated post team of the year just like it was last year everything with two play style pluses and the most meta cards in the game are like disgracefully disproportioned in terms of how expensive they are to the rest of the market and i think ea is just adding to that and they know that it creates more hype around the cards when they keep them extinct for the first portion of the day of the promo I can't remember a day and a time where half of the promo team almost each week, it was especially bad this week, so I may be exaggerating a little bit, but like last week of Future Stars, Cole Palmer was extinct, um, and there's probably two or three others that were extinct in the last two, three weeks of Future Stars with Road to the Final, and yesterday, Griezmann, Mendy, Marquinhos, Kelly, and again, like almost all of the heroes were extinct. Tevez is extinct. Voller still is. They messed up some price ranges. That was part of it yesterday. Rudy Voller had a max price of 95K or 100 something thousand coins, and they updated it to 380K. That's still too low. He is still extinct. Um, Marquisio's price range was 95,000 coins. That was the mistake. Like, what are they doing? Okay, like that's just crazy. So that's just an EA mistake. But I think keeping these cards almost unpackable for the first day of the promo, I think that's something that EA have realized. People go out and spend more money on store packs when they keep these cards extinct because then it just creates a rush of like trying to pack something that doesn't exist. But then think about that logically. If you're trying to go out and pack something that doesn't exist, wouldn't that make you stop and think and be like, oh yeah, if I'm spending money to go try to pack this card, but nobody else is packing it, why am I going to be the one that would actually pack it? You know what I'm saying? So just something to think through. Um, the pack weight in general has been very just so off. Like Future Stars is actually pretty comparable to how I would compare this fantasy promo pack weight to be. We saw it all last week, right? All of us packed the fodder stars like Diakite and all that sort of stuff. We packed those guys multiple times. We were tired of them. It was nice to see the promo card flare. It's the same way this week. I think everybody has packed Andre or Politano or uh, Iago Aspas. I already packed Aspas and Politano yesterday from like 10 saved player picks and packs, a combination of the both. So they're very packable on the low tier, but it's the top tier that is like unpackable and just astronomically expensive. And if you think about it, EA wants that to a sense because they want everybody to be chasing those top tier best cards, but they're like so far out of reach that it seems impossible. So yeah, I don't know. I think that's my complaint. And I think it's gotten worse and worse and worse throughout this promo this year and these promos after team of the year specifically there's so many cards that start off the first day that are extinct it's just like it's dumb and i know that it has to do with a little bit of how expensive the market is at this time as well but yeah it just it's frustrating and i, I think it's it's actually making people not want to play the game i mean gameplay aside gameplay is number one thing right now in this game that is disappointing people and making people upset about playing this game for sure i think the cup helps for sure because it's something refreshing it's something new but meta and the meta gameplay foot champs rivals is very frustrating and this just adds to it i think um, from a menu side side of things it just makes people not want to get on the game when they can't go afford the new cards that have been dropped that they're excited to try because they're extinct and not on the market and then they update the price ranges people buy them for stupid amounts of money and then they make people lose a bunch of coins so they have to go open packs right that's how it's working from ea's sort of thing so it sucks for us and it's very annoying but it probably does work out in the positive for ea in the end so just be careful i know these are live cards too so they're gonna be a little overpriced but even some of these prices like mendy for six seven million no way dude no way. This is more expensive than Team of the Year Teo Hernandez. And Team of the Year Teo is still clear of this card. I know it's Ferland Mendy, but come on, man. Team of the Year Teo is still clear of that. And it's 2 million coins more than him. So that's kind of crazy right there. But let's talk about the upgrade to these cards because um, that is one thing that's very interesting. Guys, I smell EA mistakes 
with these upgrades, okay? I'm telling you right now, there are going to be mistakes with these cards because the way they have worded this, there's already some inconsistencies and how these cards are going to get upgraded uh, is a part of that. First of all, it shows on their graphics, right? Plus ones at the top of the cards, so like plus one overall. But in the fine print here, it says each upgrade is a plus one inform boost. If you take a look at the promo team, you've got two 86 rated cards, which right now 86s are getting plus twos going to 88 overalls. So if Benjamin Andre and Stark from the women's Leipzig team end up getting all four of their upgrade criteria complete, they would actually go up not just plus four. Their first upgrade would be 86 to 88, and then they would have again, the three upgrades after that. So they could technically go up five ratings instead of four. That's just something to watch out for. A small detail and inconsistency there. We'll see what EA do. Um, again, the upgrades themselves are exactly what we thought. One clean sheet for a defender or a goalkeeper and a goal or an assist for a attacker or a midfielder. Two wins for the club, three appearances for the player and 11 goals or more across the four matches. And this is where it gets more fine print heavy. Each player's next four domestic league fixtures will be defined when that player goes into ultimate team. If a player is released on the same day as a domestic league match for that fixture, it'll be recorded and count towards their upgrade path. Will be defined by the day when that player goes into ultimate team, guys. We have SBC players that are going to be dropping probably today, maybe tomorrow, multiple different entry points for certain cards during these next couple of weeks of this promo. There is bound to be a mistake. EA is going to either forget to upgrade a card or they're going to upgrade a card too early. I feel like you can bookmark that, all right, for the next couple of weeks, three, four weeks in this game as these games uh, in real life are happening. Watch out for that very carefully because it's not just, okay, February 23rd as of yesterday all of these cards are live. It is whatever day the cards came into the game is when they will be live from then on with those fixtures. Now, with that being said, there's games today and people are already investing today. Um, one game today that a lot of people are very interested in, myself included, not because I've, I've invested, but because there could be a card getting or earning an upgrade already is Atletico Madrid versus Almeria. Now, I'm hearing that Griezmann is injured, but there are two Atletico Madrid cards in this team, guys, and Molina is looking cracked. For an 87 rated, he's only got one playstyle plus, which again, I'm disappointed with because I was hoping the whole promo team would have two playstyle pluses, but he's 4-4 high high. And uh, yeah, if they win today, that's a, a game of a win towards that upgrade. And if they keep a clean sheet because they're playing the 18th uh, place team in the La Liga table, um, you know, he could be keeping a clean sheet and boom, that's an upgrade for him. Cards will get upgraded later on during the week. I believe it's they're going to they're going to set a day for upgrades and they'll upgrade them that same day each and every week after the games on the weekend. This guy is insane play styles. Jockey, block, anticipate. Slide tackle, press proven rapid. This is a, a nuts card. And if he gets upgrades right away, his price is just going to keep going up. So it's risky, right? This is kind of like how when ones to watch used to drop. When you had games that first weekend or maybe even like Thunderstruck. Remember during the promo during Black Friday this past year, um, earlier on in this year of Ultimate Team, there were those cards that had games right away. And some of them started to go up because of that, because they were getting wins and stuff. But then others started to drop. So it's going to start today with these cards since they're live, they're in action. And some cards like Chalhanoglu is one that I'm going to keep my eye on closely this weekend because they play on Sunday. And here's a little bit of a tip, right? Some of these cards like for Konate and Liverpool, their fourth league match after yesterday when he was dropped in the game is not until like the end of March. But the fourth league match for Chalhanoglu and for some of these other Serie A teams like Politano as well, is going to be in like two weeks. March 10th is the fourth league match since they're kind of doubling up in the Serie A in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Shalhanoglu has a chance to go to a 92 rated card. If Inter blazed through all their fixtures, check off all the boxes for upgrades, he could be a 92 in, yeah, literally two weeks, which would be disgusting and probably not what EA wants, but that would make his price go bananas. So I'm not investing right now just because, again, he doesn't play until tomorrow and I'm... Mm, First day investing on a promo without a bunch of saved up packs, because I know some people saved packs, but like, mm, I'm, I think I'm going to wait on investing in these cards, guys, especially with how in expensive they are. You know, we have more content coming out this weekend. Um, I know Road to the Finals started to go up on like Sunday or Monday after they were released, so I think I'm going to chance it on some of these um, and wait a little bit longer. Like 300k for this card does seem a little expensive, but it's also like the first usable version of Chahanoglu, as I mentioned, and it's a really, really good looking card. So any links to Lautaro, which a bunch of people did. So that's what I would say. Do a little bit of research. If you're interested, 
in any of these cards do a little bit a bit of research research on when they play how they upgrade and stuff like that if you're wondering what club they update for uh, or get upgraded for you can go into the card search any of the fantasy heroes or the regular cards of course and click in here and see on the hero profile it says this item is based off of ac milan so rui cost is ac milan i think rudy voller is based off of Werder bremen and they do play today so that's something to watch out for and if you want to keep track of all the upgrades foot.gg has a tracker right now i'm sure that foot bin is going to have a tracker as well in the coming future in the coming days <laughs> got that ea mumbo jumbo in my head still bro where's our hero pick compensation by the way speaking of heroes they started giving it out then they stopped uh anyways foot.gg is a tracker i'm sure footbin is going to have one soon as well now speaking of upgrades one loose end to tie up is we had a few road to the final upgrades that happened yesterday and guys uh we were talking about this on stream guys it is the free cards the objective cards that are carrying more hype with these road to the final upgrades than like the rest of the cards that are on the market. Like I looked at the Galino and you look at the um, the Nerez and the Boscagli. These guys look absolutely insane for some of the upgrades that were put out yesterday. Like if we go, let's go quality. Let's go road to the final. Boscagli looks insane, man. So does Galino, 99 pace on Galino with relentless plus. Um, I mean, 94 composure, 90 curve. I mean, he's all pace, right? He's just all pace, get in behind. He's got rapid. He's got quick step. That's a nuts card. But Skagli, I actually tried out for a couple of games. I need to try him out a little bit more. This looks like a crazy center back with the plus two, right? 86s go to 88s. Medium high, four-star weak foot, aerial plus. The dribbling and the passing stats for a center back are unbelievable. 91 long pass, 88 short pass with 86 vision. In insane stellar defending with good play styles as well. What a card. What a card. Shout out to PSV for that win and uh, the upgrade there. So I would say that most of these cards haven't gone up, though, since the upgrade uh, for most of them. Some of them dipped a little bit and then rebounded. Pedri's down a smidge. Sule's down a smidge. Um, same thing with some of the other cards. Zambo and Gliso went down a bunch and then rebounded back up. So just keep a close eye on those. We do have, I think, we have more games coming up next week. Is that true? In February? No, 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 there's not there's no games until March. That's right. March 5th is the next um, Champions League games, March 5th, 6th, and then 12th and 13th for Champions League. So that's kind of that little loose end to tie up there as those cards were upgraded. And again, it's kind of the free ones that look nuts. Now, we've yapped enough. Let's talk about today, Saturday market. We haven't covered those things yet. First thing I want to look at is uh, a lot of questions about leaked cards, mini release. We're missing Lacazette. This was so smart by EA because if they would have included Lacazette in the team yesterday, they had a game and he scored. So he would have, whatever his card would have looked like, got a plus one. But since his card was not released, whether it's going to be in the mini release that comes out this weekend or whether it's going to be in team two, because once again, this is a team two, a two week promo. There is a team two coming, right? The website says team one, everything else says team one, blah, 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 which means there's a team two coming. So I don't know if Lacazette's going to be in the mini release, which I kind of hope he's not because the mini releases that we had during uh, Future Stars were absolutely woeful. So hopefully we actually have a good mini release with cards that are solid or they just drop him in team two but then again he would not get the upgrade for the game that happened yesterday he would only get the upgrades once he's dropped in the game uh, so that's where Lacazette is I guess he's he's coming at some point whether it's team two or the mini release we could get the mini release today on Saturday um, there are a bunch of games that are happening today too so maybe EA want to do that or maybe they'll put that off until Sunday who knows? It's a mix of, of either of those in these promos that they keep releasing. So we'll have to see. And then probably drop a couple more cards in a mini release as well. So just wait out for that today at content or tomorrow. Um, unless EA is not doing a mini release. We'll have to see. Now let's look at a couple of leaks as well. Because remember we had two fantasy foot hero leaked SBC players. Well, we know who they are now. One is Alex Scott, which is kind of funny if you just used her base hero card in that one right back upgrade that we had during future stars she is coming as a fantasy hero sbc soon this could be a really good card it's going to depend on the upgrade again i don't think this is going to be a super expensive sbc i don't think this is an sbc it's like oh hey finally high rated fodder is going to go up right and probably not like honestly uh the, the women's heroes version ucl women's heroes version of alex scott isn't that expensive it is a really good card she has jockey anticipate whipped past and 
Energizer, Relentless Plus. This could be a really good card with two playstyle pluses, which I think for the SBC players they've been dropping, it should be a minimum. Like, they have to have two playstyle pluses guaranteed. But again, it would be a live card. So this one has some potential. It could be really, really good. Um, we'll just see when it's dropped. I don't know when. Uh, that could be a good one. I'm maybe even a little more excited, though, for Ludovic, Ludovic Julie. I'm actually really excited for this card because he is one I think that's flown under the radar with his base hero and his UCL hero. He has some crazy stats. It's just his playstyle plus doesn't really fit the card. Bro is five foot five, a short king, four star, four star. He's got really good stats if you look at the card. Really good dribbling, really good pace. He's a right wing player. Really good individual stats on the card as well. He's got finesse, whipped pass, technical, quick step, relentless, and then he's got acrobatic plus. So um, I don't know what they would put on his card um, to be a second play style. Maybe they give him like technical and acrobatic or maybe quick step and technical and they change it up completely for this Julie SBC. But he would also be one that I don't think would be that expensive. I mean, this card in the market's not that expensive at all. And his hero, his hero cards this year have not been expensive. So it doesn't look like it's going to be one of those SBCs soon that's going to make high rated fodder go up. Like we've been looking for an icon player or something to make high rated fodder move. And it looks like that neither of those two are going to be that. But those are the only leaked SBCs that we do have right now. Uh, I could see one of them dropping today. I think, what was it, last week we had Shevchenko, or two weeks ago we had Shevchenko on a Saturday. So I could very well see us getting a hero SBC today. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. So watch out for that. Either a hero SBC or a fantasy player, I would imagine, would be dropped today on Saturday. That's almost always a thing on Saturdays, a player SBC. And then we do have an Evo. That is still leaked as well. Um, and this was the Evo leak yesterday. I wanted to point out this tweet though. Because Foot Police said. Since the evolution that he leaked. Didn't come out. Uh, and today we got an evolution that was scheduled for Sunday. I think this one will come on Sunday. So bro literally has the leaks. About what's coming out on Sunday. But didn't tell us yet. Cool. Okay. Whatever. Uh, this is the evolution that's probably going to come out. Either today or on Sunday. And I mean it's kind of cool. But also not. Max overall 86, position left wing, max pace 89, max shooting 83, and then max defending 49. So it really cuts down on the potential players you could put into this because that's a really low shooting stat. Maybe they're going to upgrade the shooting and it's like making a left wing that can actually shoot or something. I'm not sure, but it does allow you to put a player in it that already has a play style plus. So I'm guessing that it's, yeah, free for sure. And I'm guessing it's not going to give a play style plus. We'll have to see. Um, so that is an evolution that is leaked right now. If you noticed Gakpo Ice, I think, yeah, it was Gakpo Ice. He went crazy on the market yesterday because he fits that Evo and he's still almost max price as people are investing in his card for him to fit in that evolution. So just watch out for that one. That's one of the leaks that's going around right now too. So I don't know if that's today, but that could be coming this weekend for sure on this game. And then let's talk market, all right? Let's talk market a little bit because yesterday it was a mixed bag, right? There was a really low um window of opportunity to buy these cards when they first came out like there was a crazy spike first like 15 20 30 minutes Majri went from like 180k to 400,000 coins shalhana glue went from like 200 something k to like 350 konate went from i think he was like 300 something or two 300,000 coins to like 500k obviously now they're back down and of course there's some games today that could hurt these cards or help them you never know but these cards were like all over the place they're going to continue to be all over the place because they're live and they're pretty rare especially in the top tier so if you want to invest i'd be very very careful with these and also very very careful with the heroes they do fluctuate a lot but i'd be careful with them other than that it was pretty quiet. Like some of the future stars from team two had a couple of dips. Mukoko's down a little. Salma's down. I don't know why Zyre Emery's 1.77 because, yeah, he was like good all day yesterday for like 1.8 to 1.9. So that just looks like a footbin undercut, which I can't afford if I wanted to go buy anyway. I did pick up Hoyland yesterday. I picked three Hoylands up at 200. He was kind of my favorite buy that was going out of packs. Got him on bid, and I was able to sell one for a lazy, but I still have a couple more uh, that I think I'll be able to sell for like 220. I mean, he's going to lazy sell pretty well, I think, because, again, a lot of people maybe just saw yesterday's team. They're like, okay, 
Werner's too expensive. Let me go buy this Hoyland just because I wanted to try him out. But the market yesterday was only impacted the most on that lower tier of meta, guys. Like the Alan St. Maximin that we looked at, the Nick Pope. Uh, some of those cards went really, really high in price. If you want to trade with anything on this market right now, trade with this because this is the most hyped part of the game, that cup mode that people are buying cards for. Watch the fluctuations on these out-of-pack special cards um, that are low-rated, right? One of the ways you can find cards that are up a lot, if you go to Footbin, go to the Market tab, go down to Indie, index icons or index anything for that matter and look for the top gainers and you find cards that were in here in the top gainers and you think okay St. Max he's up a bunch there's Nick Pope he's up a bunch and then what you can kind of do is realize okay those cards are very very hyped how about Oshawala her card is up a bunch 170,000 coins what was she yesterday oh 120k and she was already she was all the way up at 195 right and she was just down at 164. So like, okay, she's gonna have a new price here. She's probably gonna stay in like the 160 to 170 range. But if I can get one at like 150, as people who maybe finished the cup start to sell off a card or two, then you could maybe try to find a deal and you can start trading with those. It's basically just looking for different cards to trade with because there's demand in different areas of the market than what there was before. Um, yesterday, I opted for some out of packs trading. I picked up two Boshes at 1.3 mil. I just sold one for one point um 1.43 she's very very rare she's now 1.36 again so i'm going to try to sell the other one for 1.4 as well and then i randomly was able to snipe a delict i sniped the delict for 1.18 um and i know that you know byron not viewed in the greatest of, of ways right now with how they're playing but uh, i think i'll be able to sell this for hopefully 1.3 uh sometime today on saturday and get a quick flip out of that but i'm mostly just sticking to the quick flips investing in fodder last thing Investing in fodder, guys, it's crazy low. 40,000 coins for 90 rated is disgusting. 91s are 53K, but they're just going to keep dropping if there's no demand. Once the switch flips, people are going to be investing so much, so quickly. The only thing I would shout out is during Team of the Year, when we had these exchange SBCs out, it made the price of 89s go extra bananas. Now, I know for a fact that that was also because we had a lot of content via sbcs that people are crafting like i mean 90s went from 50,000 coins during team of the year up to 61,000 coins but if you look at the percentage rise that the 89s went on 34k up to 46,000 coins they went up more percentage point wise and yes it maybe was because of all the icon sbcs that were out there and stuff like that that were people are crafting and bruno and all that but also i think the exchange sbcs played a part in it so I would say that the 85 to the 89 range on fodder might just kind of slowly trickle its way up because people love these exchanges. People literally yesterday in the stream were saying that they were going and buying 89 rated cards to put into this to get gold rares and non-rares to go craft the 81 plus player picks, which actually when you think about it, it is cheaper to go and buy this and have a chance at packing something than it is to go and buy the provisions packs in the store. So there's a little bit of a method to the madness, but I do think that that might inflate fodder prices a little bit. But really what we need to see high rated fodder go up is like a legit icon SBC to come out that is a big time craft. Because other than that, we just have more and more icons that are getting closer and closer to expiring as you look through here in the section of the SBCs. Uh, Hullet's gone now, um, and we have, again, we need more. That's what we need to make those cards go up. So that's going to be the video for today, guys. If you did enjoy it, let me know. Uh, a thumbs up. Drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what you think of Fantasy Team 1. I love hearing you guys' comments and feedback and how you're feeling in this game. I yap for too long. It's probably going to be the number one comment. Nate yap for however long in this video. But anyways, guys, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in a video tomorrow. It's been Nate for the count. See you guys there. Peace. Out.